Rocky, the story of a small-time boxer who gets a shot at the champion bout, was released on November 21st, 1976. That makes this the 40th anniversary, so I thought it'd be a good time to recap the whole series. I reviewed all the Rocky movies before, but this is a new YouTube edition. These are fun movies to discuss. We like talking about our favorite ones, favorite quotes, favorite opponents of Rockies. This is really a franchise, something to celebrate in the same type of way as Star Wars or Godzilla or anything we enjoy obsessing over. Unlike a lot of other franchises, the Rocky series is far removed from episodic storytelling. Each film was treated as if it would be the last one. The word retire is even brought up in the first film. There's no cliffhangers or open endings to set up another sequel. Each one is firm and definitive. It unloads everything and tries to be the best it can, until the day comes when Stallone feels like he has more story to tell and has the natural instinct to do another. What I like about the Rocky series is that they're all about the character. He's the focus. It's a very internalized story about the emotions that he goes through. He becomes a very real person to me. I'm sure Sylvester Stallone put a lot of his real personality into it, but it's a fictional character that was brought to life in a very convincing way. What I also like is that he ages throughout the course of the films and his age is addressed. This is different from a character like James Bond, for example, where he's rotated out for a different actor, so they always maintain the character the way he is. The character Rocky grows old with the actor and goes through changes in his life and career just like real people. So what I'm going to do here is sweep through all seven movies, cutting straight to the opinion mostly. I'll cut out all the fat, not much plot synopsis because I'm sure you've seen them, and if not, I'm happy to be your introduction. Anyway, on to the first film, Rocky. This movie was an unexpected hit, and it shows. The humbleness of it could never be recaptured. It had nothing to live up to, neither did the character. Rocky is a very poor, lower-class guy, and he boxes in small clubs and endures injuries for slim wages. So right off the bat, you kind of feel bad for him. And on the side, he collects debts for a loan shark, so he's paid to break a guy's thumb, but he won't do it. So under his tough exterior, he's sympathetic also. He tries to help a young girl from falling in with the wrong crowd, so he has a good heart despite his brute, unsophisticated nature. He pursues a relationship with the shy pet shop girl, Adrian, played by Talia Shire, who's not respected very well by her brother, Polly, played by Burt Young. Rocky sees the beauty in her that nobody else sees and somehow relates to her odd personality. This is when you start really warming up to the character of Rocky, specifically the ice rink scene, which is when the movie officially starts getting good. He's always trying to make jokes, but they're real bad, which makes it funny anyway. I feel like just as Adrian starts to warm up to him, so do we as an audience. Then, of course, he's picked out of a hat to fight the heavyweight champion Apollo Creed, played by Carl Weathers. He's kind of arrogant and cocky, but he's fair. Rocky's trained by the grouchy Mickey, played by Burgess Meredith. He's the classic old, broken-down mentor. Whenever he shouts at Rocky, it's hilarious. He cares about him, but he treats him like shit. And there you have the roll call. Rocky, Adrian, Pauly, Mickey, and Creed, the five-pointed star of amazing characters. That's always incredible when one single movie introduces so many characters that are unforgettable. The whole film builds up to the fight, and by then, you're rooting for him to win. But as it turns out, it's not really about winning. It's about just doing your best and making it as far as you can go. Every time I watch it, it leaves me with a good feeling. So Rocky II. This one is the closest in tone with the original. It feels like a continuation of the first film, but not a rehash. It's all about the next chapter of Rocky's life. He gets married to Adrian and eventually has a kid, so he has a lot more at stake now. Rocky now has some money from the fight with Apollo. We saw him before when he was poor. Now we get to see what he does when he has money to spend. He's very impulsive and he spends it all pretty quick. A very human flaw. Soon he needs to get a job, so he tries acting in commercials, but it doesn't work out. Soon he has no choice but to get back in the ring, much to Adrian's disapproval and a risk to his health. There's a lot of comedy in this one, many funny lines from Rocky, the TV commercial scenes, and when Mickey makes him chase the chicken, 
but the drama is also heightened. He has more at stake now. He has a family to support. He can't get a job other than fighting. He has a problem with his eye. Creed is angry about losing the last fight, so now he's really out to hurt Rocky. In the first movie, he was more grounded, but now he's been elevated into almost a supervillain. To top it all off, Adrian has a health issue and goes into a coma during childbirth. So Rocky is definitely dealing with lots of other things in his life this time. The first movie was about a man trying to conquer a dream, but this one is more about him trying to survive. It's all about him trying to create a domestic life for himself while keeping his career at the same time, and balancing those two is the biggest challenge of all. I think this is the best sequel you can possibly ask for. The only thing I think is lacking is the fight scene. It's a little bit hokey. The punch sound effects aren't great, and the choreography is not very convincing. It's absurd how Rocky takes so many hits to the face without blocking, but it should be noted that it uses slow motion and other cool camera tricks, which made it innovative. Rocky 3. This is where I'm conflicted on what to say in terms of the film's quality. The entertainment value is high, arguably even more than the previous two, but Rocky's humble origin and the organic, simple storytelling are thrown out the window. I mean, he fights Hulk Hogan and Mr. T in the same movie. The Hulk Hogan scene, boxer versus wrestler, has nothing to do with the plot, but it's very entertaining. There's no mention of Rocky's eye injury. Now, after having won the championship from Apollo, he's on a winning streak and at the top of the world. But this chapter in the Rocky story is all about what happens when you meet success and what are the side effects. As Apollo says, he lost the edge, the eye of the tiger that he had before. Speaking of that, great song by Survivor introduced here. Clubber Lang, played by Mr. T, is a young, hungry, loud-mouthed wrecking machine who wants to take Rocky down. And he does giving Rocky the most brutal beating we've ever seen. The first time we see him not go the distance and just flat out lose. Not only does he lose the title, but he loses his good friend Mickey, who dies moments after. This is one of the saddest, most heart-wrenching moments in the series, the lowest low point you could possibly get. This is very similar to the Batman Nightfall story arc in the comics in the 90s, where Batman is beaten down by Bane, and then a bunch of other stuff happens, but for the sake of simplicity, as told in the movie version, The Dark Knight Rises, Batman has that same kind of low point where he has to rise up again and rematch his opponent. Even Kevin Smith on the show Comic Book Men said flat out, Dark Knight Rises is Rocky III. Clubber Lang is very much like a supervillain. He's an exaggerated, over-the-top character, and we love to hate him. That's why this movie gets you so invested. You want to see Rocky beat the shit out of him. The fight sequence is great, and I like that it's in real time, whereas all the other Rocky fights have montages. Don't get me wrong, I love montages, but the real-time editing is something cool that sets this one apart. I also really love how he makes friends with his old enemy, Apollo. There's something about it that I find kind of heartwarming, you know? Rocky IV, the Cold War Rocky film, as it's known. In many ways, this is in the same vein as three. It's entertaining as hell. It begins with two boxing gloves smashing together and exploding, and from that moment on, you're in for a ride. There's many random moments that stick out, but the birthday robot is the one that takes the cake, literally. When I was a kid, I never really thought anything of this scene. In fact, I kind of forgot about it. But after growing up and talking with friends, that robot always comes up. Like, why is there a robot in that movie? But the character that makes the film is the villain, Ivan Drago, played by Dolph Lundgren, who is sort of the underdog in his own regard. But after he kills Apollo in the ring, as in literally kills him, Rocky has to come out of retirement one last time to get his revenge. That's not the type of plot you'd expect from one of these movies. It's definitely like a comic book or perhaps a martial arts film where the goal is avenging someone's death. But it's so great. Drago is a very intimidating bad guy, but in a completely different way than Clubber Lang. This guy doesn't talk much. He hardly has any of that trash talking that Clubber Lang did, but he makes up for it with his superhuman strength. The line, whatever he hits, he destroys, always sticks with me. 
When I was a kid watching this, I was legitimately afraid for Rocky that he was going to get killed too. There's never a dull moment. The whole movie is amped up with an energizing soundtrack and tons of training montages. The training montage was always a tradition in the Rocky films, but this time it takes a different approach with different music and different ways for Rocky to train. I've counted roughly this movie is 20% montage. Today, everybody knows the montage is a big cliche. It's been spoofed on South Park, Family Guy, and everywhere. But cliches always stem from something that was done awesome. And if you go back and watch the Rocky IV montages, you'll notice the editing is excellent. Especially when Rocky and Drago are both training, the way it cuts back and forth between them is really awesome. A moment that sticks out to me is when Rocky is taking an ax to a tree and the cuts are timed to the music. And the fight montage too, I always remember that part where they're trading punches in slow motion and each shot dissolves into the next again and again and at times the music like ding, 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 ding. All the charm of the original Rocky is gone, but this one has a whole new appeal of its own. It's exaggerated and less believable, but the way it uses music and visuals I think is still great cinematic storytelling. Rocky V. This is the first one that I have personal recollection of it coming out in theaters. And even then I wondered, what could they possibly do with it? Well, this time they got the original director back, John Avildsen, and tried to connect it back to the humble roots of the first movie. Rocky is poor again because of a tax issue or some shit, so he's back in his old hometown of Philadelphia, which is cool to see the familiar surroundings again. He's even back to wearing the same clothing. He wanders around his old stomping grounds and remembers the past. There's even a flashback scene with Burgess Meredith, so this film definitely respects the franchise and is highly sentimental. So where did it go wrong? Nobody likes this one. Even Stallone doesn't talk very highly of it. I think the reason may be that the drama, the serious aspects of it, clash uncomfortably with the more exaggerated aspects. It still has that macho, meat-headed attitude of three and four, but it tries to balance the drama with it, of Rocky's relationship with his family in turmoil because he's spending too much time with a new trainee, Tommy Gunn, played by the real-life boxer Tommy Morrison. The problem I have with it, personally, is the meat-headed attitude. Rocky's son has a bully at school, and the solution is to go home, train, and then punch the kid out. So fighting is always the solution in this movie. Even the big resolution at the ending is nothing more than a big fight, and it's unnecessary because Tommy's still the champ, officially. Rocky was supposed to have brain damage. They made it clear that he can't fight anymore, so he tries to pass the torch, but instead, he takes the torch right back. Now, in a way, this is very satisfying. Cheap, but satisfying. Especially for a Rocky fight to take place on the streets, that's something we've never seen happen before. It was totally unexpected. You can't forget lines like, my ring's outside. It's meat-headed and dumb, but it gets me worked up. I like that this scene gets a reaction out of me. They make Tommy into such an asshole, you really want to see Rocky beat him up. This makes the whole thing worth it. Overall, I don't think it's a good film, but I do love the street fight. Also, the very last scene where Rocky and his son go up the Philadelphia Art Museum steps and Rocky says, I've been running up and down these steps for so many years and I never knew there was valuable pictures in this building. That's a charming moment and for it to end right there with that black and white still frame montage under the credits, I think it was a nice touch, and I was happy to see the series end there, even though it wasn't the best film by any means. But Stallone wasn't satisfied. Everybody joked about Rocky VI, nobody ever thought it would happen, but then it came. Rocky VI, known as Rocky Balboa. I wasn't happy that they broke the tradition of the title and no opening recap, but this was the Rocky movie I never expected, so I was highly skeptical all around. That gave it a natural underdog feel. Rocky had not fought in the ring for more than 20 years, but they addressed his age, and that was a big part of it. The character himself seemed to go through the same thing Stallone did, of facing skepticism and trying to prove himself once more. Something about that connected with me. It feels a lot like this movie came right from the heart. Rocky's opponent, Mason Dixon, played by real boxer Antonio Tarver, is more down-to-earth and more believable than many of his other opponents. And the fight scene is amazing. It was the most realistic of all of them. 
It's treated like a real pay-per-view match. It's shot on HD video from multiple cameras rather than film. There's graphics on the screen. They use real boxing announcer Michael Buffer. It's like watching a real boxing match, and in a way, it actually was. You can see in the behind-the-scenes DVD extras that they exchanged real punches. 60-year-old Stallone allowed the real heavyweight champion to punch him in the face over and over. Above all, this was a welcome return and a nice way to cap off the series. It's simple, it's organic, it takes a lot of time to breathe with basic scenes such as where Rocky buys a dog. The characters are all convincing, Burt Young gives a great closing performance for Pauly. They bring back Tony Burden as the trainer Duke. Geraldine Hughes is lovable as Marie, and so on. Everybody clicks together just right. Where Rocky V tried to bring it back to the humble roots and failed, this one actually succeeds. That's not to say it's as good as the first two, but it was a great return and a good way to end the series. Then there's Grudge Match. This is not a Rocky movie, but I feel the need to mention it because it almost is. It's a comedy, but the plot is basically like a Rocky film. Stallone plays a boxer named Henry Razor Sharp, and Robert De Niro plays his opponent, Billy the Kid. So it's Rocky versus Raging Bull. How awesome is that? They play their ages, being past their prime, but in their younger days, they were bitter rivals and had two matches together, but the second one was such a close call that now, after all these years, they finish it. This is like an alternate timeline Rocky 3. Hear me out. Let's say Rocky 3 to 6 never happened. Don't you think Apollo would have been begging for another rematch? If he was so angry after the first fight, why would he let the second one go? They both fell down at the same time, and Rocky got up first. Barely. That's exactly what happens in Grudge Match during the flashback when they're young. And now they're going to settle it. So imagine if you swapped out the De Niro character with Apollo Creed. Also, the Stallone character is having a problem with his eye, which started in Rocky II, so it sort of follows the continuity from Rocky II. If you only made minor changes, this could be a Rocky film. Not that it should be, but just saying. It even has the footage of young Stallone, which I think is old behind-the-scenes footage of Stallone training for the Rocky films. It has the montage, the fight scene, the old trainer character, Alan Arkin, who's hilarious. It has the drama, the heart, the tone, and the traditional format of a Rocky movie. One thing it does better than any of the Rocky movies, believe it or not, is the relationship between the two opponents. Traditionally, they don't interact much. Maybe there's a press conference scene and then they fight at the end, but the focus is always on Rocky. But here, it does something different. It gives equal attention to both characters. They each have their own stories that connect. You see them interact a lot. They share many scenes together. And Stallone and De Niro have a great chemistry. They're a surprisingly very funny duo. I went into this thinking it was going to be really bad, but it surprised me. If you're a Rocky fan and are open to see Stallone and De Niro spoofing themselves, I say check it out. Then at last, we have Creed, or Rocky Seven, if you choose to call it that. This was another surprise. Nobody expected a seventh Rocky film, but the concept made sense. Rocky would not be fighting this time. He would be training a younger boxer, which is the same basic idea as Rocky V, although this time they actually carry out that idea, and he successfully passes the torch. And the boxer is the son of Apollo Creed, Adonis, which ties it together with the older movies. He's played by Michael B. Jordan, who does a fantastic job. He's a flawed character. He loses his temper or makes bad decisions, but in the end, ultimately, he's likable. Rocky is technically a supporting role, but he's more in the foreground than I expected him to be, and he's magnificent. This time he's fighting cancer, which raises the stakes like no other. It's genuinely sad to see him in that state. And Tony Bello, going with the theme of using real boxers, plays Creed's opponent, Conlon. I thought he was a bit exaggerated since he's always talking shit, being unprofessional, and starting fights at the press conference, but that also plays into the love-to-hate characteristic like Clubber Lang but not that extreme. Having a strong villain is important, and this reminded me of that. I think it was a good balance, though maybe slightly over the edge. The fight scenes are incredible, some of the best I've ever seen. There's a fight earlier in the film where it's done in one long traveling shot in real time, which is very impressive. 
Ryan Coogler is the director this time. Getting a fresh mind on the Rocky series was a great idea. The plot is similar to the first Rocky film. It's nothing extraordinarily different, but it works very well. It takes the same formula and does it again, but it still feels fresh and new. It's like seeing Rocky for the first time all over again. Of course, there's lots more to say, but I gotta end it since I'm short on time. You could talk about these movies forever, so I'm sure this will go on, um, you know, into the future. But that covers all the most important stuff. So now, let's rank the movies. Now, I think they're all entertaining, but if you're talking seriously, which one is the best film? I would say, undeniably, it has to be the first one. I mean, it won Best Picture for that year. Not that that's the deciding factor, but, um, you know, it's definitely the best, I think. And then slightly below it, you have two. And then I think you take a step down from that, and you have this plateau where you have the two new ones, uh, the two most recent uh, Creed, and then maybe slightly below Creed is Rocky Balboa. And then underneath that you have four, and then three slightly below that. And then at the very, very bottom, it's undeniable, five. It's the shittiest one, but <laughs> still love the street fight. So that's how I rank them. So um, let me know uh, what order you'd put these movies in, and happy 40th anniversary to Rocky.